Hey there, let's talk about leak code number five, longest palindrobic substring. So the problem description is actually pretty simple. We're given a string S and we're told to return the longest palindrome in S where a palindrome is a word that looks the same even when it's reversed. All right, so let's take a look at this string. The array below it represents the length of a palindrome centered at that letter. So for example, when we take a look at the letter A, we check what is the longest palindrome centered around this A. Well, A is the leftmost element, so we can't really make a palindrome longer than length 1, so here we'll just populate the first element of the array with 1. Then we take a look at the I. We try to expand our palindrome with I as the center, but we find that the neighboring letters do not match. So again, our palindrome centered at I is 1. Then we look at B. We repeat the same process and check our neighbors. In this case, they are actually equal, so we include them in our palindrome. Then we check the neighbors after that, and we can see that they are not equal. So we say that this palindrome centered at B has a length 3. So we can continue this process for all letters in the string, just expanding left and right around each letter as a potential sensor to see what is the longest palindrome. That algorithm has n squared runtime because we're checking each letter as a potential sensor, and for each letter, we're expanding potentially across the whole string. And surprisingly, LeetCode will actually accept this n squared runtime. The challenge here is really just implementation and making sure that you handle even and odd cases well. Now, here's the thing. I've actually been asked in real interviews to come up with a solution better than the n squared algorithm. The LeetCode editorial says that the linear time algorithm is out of scope, but to be honest, I don't really think they know what they're talking about. What's in scope for an interview is whatever your interviewer wants it to be. And so, we're going to spend the rest of this video talking about the true optimal solution, and it's a doozy, so stay tuned. So let's skip ahead to this B right here and fill in the values for all the letters before it, and you can verify that indeed the longest palindrome centered at these I's is 1, and the longest palindrome centered at O is 9. So now we ask, what's the longest palindrome centered at this B? Well, we could just do our neighbor checking loop again, but remember, the left side of O is a mirror of the right side of O, and since the palindrome IBI is contained in the left side, what can we conclude? Well, we can just copy the length of the palindrome centered at B over to the right side. And we can do this because the IBI subpalindrome is entirely enclosed within a larger palindrome, right? If IBI is a palindrome on the left side, it's still going to be a palindrome with the same length when it's mirrored over to the right side. So that's the general motivation for Manneker's algorithm, which is the O of N solution we're going to talk about. But there are some finer points to this than just copying the subpalindrome lengths over from left to right. Let's take a look at this example. Let's first fill in the maximum palindrome length censored at the first couple letters and verify for yourself that these are correct. Now, let's figure out what's the palindrome length at this current letter I. This letter I is contained within a larger palindrome centered at the yellow D. So we take a look at the mirror of this green I, which is this red I right here. The longest palindrome centered at the red I is going to be AIA, which has length 3. We can see that AIA is entirely contained within the larger palindrome, just like we had before. So in this case, can we copy the value 3 from the left I to the right I? The answer is no. All we can say, actually, is that the green eye on the right side has at least the length of the palindrome centered at the red eye, right? Because we can see here that the palindrome centered on the green eye will end up having a palindrome of length 7, which is definitely not equal to 3. So what on earth is different between these two cases? Both sub-palindromes are entirely contained within a larger palindrome, right? Well, here's the key difference. In the example we just showed, the AIA palindrome is entirely contained in the larger palindrome, but it, it extends all the way to the border of the larger palindrome. In the other example, the IBI palindrome was entirely contained in the larger palindrome, but it did not extend to the border of the larger palindrome. So why does this difference affect our answer so much? Well, if we take a look at the IBI palindrome, we can see that it's bordered by these red letters, A and O. Its mirror image also has the same bordering letters, but reversed. 
And so because IBI does not extend all the way to the border of the larger palindrome, its bordering letters are entirely contained within the larger palindrome as well. Because its bordering letters are also entirely contained within the larger palindrome, we know that the palindrome centered on the right B has to be exactly the same length as the palindrome centered on the left B. In contrast, when the subpalindrome extends all the way to the border of the larger palindrome, the enclosing letters of the subpalindrome lie beyond the larger palindrome. Because they lie beyond the larger palindrome, we can't say for certain whether the red enclosing letters will be the same. And indeed, we can see here that the left subpalindrome has bordering letters I and D, whereas the second subpalindrome has bordering letters D and D, which are equal. So the subpalindrome on the right actually has the potential to be even longer than the subpalindrome on the left. And then, if we continue expanding around the I, we'll end up concluding that this subpalindrome actually has length 7. Okay, and then we move on. Let's try to apply what we've observed so far. At the next letter A, we take a look at the palindrome centered on its mirror A, this red guy right here. The palindrome centered on the red A is entirely contained within the larger palindrome and does not extend to the border. So therefore, we can just copy the value A1 to the right A. Now we move on to the D. We look at its mirror in the current palindrome, which is going to be this red guy right here. The palindrome centered at the red D has length 7 and extends beyond the palindrome centered at the yellow I. And just by eyeballing, we can tell that the palindrome around the green D is not going to be 7 because there's not even enough room for a palindrome of length 7 centered around the green D. So therefore, when the palindrome centered on the mirror letter extends beyond the window of the current palindrome, we cannot just copy its value from left to right. And indeed, we can see that the current letter only has a palindrome of length 3. Okay, so let's briefly recap what we talked about so far, because it's been a lot. For each letter, we take a look at its mirror letter within the current palindrome. If the mirror letter is the center of a subpalindrome that does not extend up to the border of the larger palindrome, then we can just copy the palindrome length from the mirror letter on the left to the current letter on the right. If the mirror letter is the center of a palindrome that extends all the way to the border of a larger palindrome, then we can only say that the current letter's palindrome on the right is at least as long as the mirror letter palindrome on the left. If the mirror letter's palindrome extends beyond the border of the current palindrome, then we can only say that the current letter's palindrome is at least two times the distance to the right border plus one. This third rule might sound a bit confusing, but don't worry, we'll go over an example later. And finally, if the current letter is not contained within a larger palindrome, then we just need to check its neighbors one by one and expand around that letter. Alrighty, so let's find the largest palindrome in this string using the four rules we just talked about. For the first letter, we're going to be in situation number four because we haven't explored anything yet. The first letter just has palindrome length one, so let's write that down. Now on the second letter A, the largest palindrome I found so far was the length one palindrome centered at I. So therefore, we're still in situation number four. We explore the neighbors of A, which are these two I's, and we determine that this palindrome centered on A has length three. Okay, and then on the second I, we realize that I is contained within the larger palindrome centered at A. So we're now in situation number two, because the mi mirror I in red is contained within the current larger palindrome, and it goes up to the border of the larger palindrome. So we need to explore beyond the mirror length. The mirror I only has a length one. So we can start by checking the immediate neighbors of the current letter. We check the current neighbors and they're the same. So we can include them in our palindrome count, and we set the current value in the array to three. On the next letter A, we're still contained within a larger palindrome. This time the palindrome centered at I. We look at the, at the mirror A in red, and we realize that the mirror letter's palindrome extends beyond the border of the green palindrome, so we're in situation number three. So for the current green A, we need to explore beyond the boundaries of the larger palindrome, so we look at the red D and the red I. They aren't equal, so we set the palindrome length to one and move on. At this D, we realize that the last palindrome length with length greater than one was this guy, AIA. So we're now in situation number four. 
So we explore its neighbors until we determine that the current palindrome has length seven. Okay, so here I've highlighted the center of the current palindrome in yellow for ease of viewing. And the green letter is the current letter whose palindrome we're trying to determine. Alrighty, so we look at the mirror of the green A within this palindrome and it's, and it's this red A right here. We're in situation one right now because the mirror palindrome does not go up to the border. So we can just copy the value one from left to right. At the next letter I, we look at the mirror I, which is this red letter right here. The red letter is the center of a length three palindrome, and we can see that this is situation number two, because the red palindrome goes up to the border of the green palindrome. We can actually initialize our right palindrome with length three, because we know that the palindrome on the right has length at least the size of its left mirror. So we begin our search not at the direct neighbors, but at the neighbors of a length three palindrome. The Ds are indeed equal, so we continue to the next labor. The As are still equal, so we continue. I and K are not equal, so our palindrome length is 7 with I at the center. Now we look at this A. Its mirror is this red A right here. This is situation number 1, so we copy the 1 over from left to right. Then we look at the D. The palindrome centered on the mirror D extends beyond the green palindrome, so this is situation number 3. All right, so this is what I was talking about when earlier. I said that the current palindrome is at least two times distance to the right border plus one, right? Because D is just one letter away from the right border of the larger palindrome. So we can initialize our palindrome around D with length three and begin searching for neighbors beyond the larger palindrome. The letter beyond the larger palindrome is going to be K and K does not equal I. So we record that our length is three. Then we look at this A, its mirror is over here. And now we're in situation number two. We look at its neighbors, but its neighbors aren't equal. So we record its length as being one. Finally, we look at K. K is in situation number four. So we explore and realize that we're at the very end of the string and just have a palindrome of length one. So that's the walkthrough of Manneker's algorithm. We have a few open questions remaining, but I'm not going to go through these in super detail because this is already a very long video. So really quickly, this algorithm I presented only works on odd length strings. For even length strings, we can use this really neat trick suggested by Wikipedia. We can insert identical dummy characters between each letter so that the length of the modified string is 2n plus 1. 2 times any number is always an even number, and an even number plus 1 is always an odd number. So our modified string will always be an odd length, and the palindrome length in the original string will just be half of the pa longest palindrome we find in the modified string. And the runtime of Manicurs is actually linear, which is crazy. I'm not going to go through a detailed analysis of that because again, this video is already pretty long, but I suggest you walk through a string with those four rules we talked about earlier for one string that has every letter different, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and do another walkthrough for a string where every letter is the same, like A, 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 you'll be able to see for yourself that the runtime is indeed linear. Or you can look up a more rigorous proof on Google if you're not convinced. All right, so let's jump into the code. Surprisingly, the implementation of these ideas is actually really simple and can be done in just a few lines. Firstly, we'll initialize S prime, which will be that string with all the pound symbols. We'll initialize our radii array, which will contain the length of the palindrome in S prime from the center to the end of the palindrome. We'll also initialize four variables to zero, center, right border, max radius, and largest palindrome center. Center represents the index of the palindrome that reaches the furthest to the right. Right border represents the rightmost index of that palindrome. Max radius represents the radius of the maximum palindrome in S prime. And largest palindrome center represents the index of the center of the largest palindrome in S prime. We iterate over S prime and we look at the mirror letter. The mirror letter will be at a distance of i minus center from the center, so we take center minus i minus center. If the mirror letter's ra radius is less than the distance of the current index to the right border of the current larger palindrome, then we can just copy the radius value from left to right and continue to the next iteration. Otherwise, we know that the current palindrome is at least as large as the distance from the current index to the right border. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can start exploring the neighbors of the current palindrome. If we are within a larger palindrome, 
then we'll initialize our search from the extremities of the current radius. If we are not within a larger palindrome, then we would have skipped over these lines right here. So radii i would still be set to zero, and we would be checking the direct neighbors of the current letter. Now, if the current palindrome is very long and extends beyond the border of the current larger palindrome, we reset the center index to the current index i, and we reset the right border to be the right border of the current palindrome centered at i, because the right border should represent the farthest that a palindrome currently extends, and center should represent the index of that palindrome center. Finally, we check if the current radius is the largest radius we've seen so far. If so, we record the largest radius value as well as the index of the center of that palindrome. After we're done with this loop, we now just need to translate these indices from s prime to s. Since s prime is just 2 times the length of the original string plus 1, we'll just take the center index, subtract the radius, and floor divide by 2. We can then index s from star index to star index plus max radius. Now remember that max radius is a radius within s prime, but because s prime is double the length of s, max radius would represent the full length of the palindrome in the original string. So we don't need to do any extra division here. Okay, so we can submit this code and we can see that we beat significantly more users than the quadratic time algorithm. This is a super tough algorithm to, to understand, so I highly recommend you rewatch the key parts at a slower pace if you miss some of it. I hope you found this helpful, and please like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Thanks, I'll see you in the next video.